Hello friends, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology and in this video lecture we are going to talk about one specific antibiotic that is Cephazolin. So Cephazolin belongs to Cephalosporin class of antibiotics. So we are going to talk about Cephazolin uses, Cephazolin side effects, Cephazolin mechanism of action and we are also going to start with the Cephazolin general properties in this particular lecture. So let's begin to talk about the general properties of Cephazolin antibiotic. The first thing is that the cefazolin, also known as uh, cefazolin or cefazolin, whatever you say, C F A or C E P H A, whatever. First generation cephalosporin antibiotic used for the treatment of several types of bacterial infections. When you talk about cephalosporin antibiotic these days, we generally talk about third generation cephalosporins. Doctors use third generation cephalosporins more often against a different gram negative and gram positive bacterial infection. They are broad spectrum antibiotics, particularly belonging to the beta lactam inhibitor. So cell wall synthesis inhibitor kind of antibiotics but cefazolin is a primary it's 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 a first generation cephalosporin antibiotic we still need to use cefazolin in some cases that's what we're going to uh, talk today used to treat cellulitis uh, urinary tract infection pneumonia endocarditis joint infection and biliary tract infections these are the places where we use them now, what are the classification of the cefazolin antibiotic remember if we classify them there are four different generations of cephalosporin antibiotic first second third and fourth and they are arranged based on their gram coverage so from generation one to generation four we are moving from more gram positive coverage towards more gram negative coverage so first generation antibiotic like cefazolin cephalexine they are covering their effective against gram positive bacteria and the more we are moving towards fourth generation they are becoming more effective against gram negative bacteria so third generation cephalosporins are the ones that are used these days quite often like cefixime cefotaxime cef uh, zone okay and the fourth generation was cefepine so they are all used against gram negative quite often and there is also fifth generation which is known as advanced generation which is not listed here which is generally used as MRSA coverage so they are only effective against the multi-drug resistant staphylococcus or the multi-drug resistant superbugs so this is the classification they belong to cephalosporin antibiotic okay first generation cephalosporin and what are cephalosporins cephalosporins are beta lactam inhibitor beta lactam kind of antibiotic so the mechanism of action for uh, this particular antibiotic that is uh, cefazolin so what is the mechanism of action of cefazolin has a broad spectrum due to the inhibition of cell wall synthesis and if we inhibit the cell wall synthesis of a bacteria the bacteria will not survive so that means this antibiotic will become bactericidal in nature it will kill the bacteria it will not allow the bacteria to live and grow without the cell wall it attains high serum levels and is excreted quickly via the urine so here you can see the mechanism of action so basically what we know is that in the glycopeptide structure that is present in the peptidoglycan layer uh, of the cell wall of the bacteria and this peptidoglycan layer has nag n acetyl glucosamine and n acetyl muramic acid that is nam structures and nams are connected to different uh, carbohydrate moieties and we call it glycopeptide because it carries both it carries the glycogen like the sugar content as well as the protein content now they have specific amino acid structure you can see that these are amino acid structure the beads and they have proper structures where they cross link with each other okay this is the normal cross linking process you can see that this is a normal cross linking process and we call it transpeptidation because this this colored <coughs> beads are amino acids nothing but amino acids right the moment they interact d alanine is cleaved out and as a result a transpeptidation reaction is done which is carried out by an enzyme known as transpeptidase the short form of which is also known as pbp pe penicillin binding protein pbp okay pbp transpeptidase same enzyme so this transpeptidase why because they involved in the process of transpeptidate transpeptidation okay pe or peptidyl transfer reaction here so this interaction is done cross linking between two nam sequences are done so cross linking between two nam sequences done and after this cross-linking, what we can say is that the proper uh, peptidoglycan structure is built. <clears throat> this strong peptidoglycan structure is built and the cell wall structure is formed. And the moment cell wall structure is formed, uh, the bacteria can live normally because cell wall is a protective layer of bacteria, which is protecting bacteria against the environmental uh, injuries. But now what happens whenever we have this, we have this cefazolin or any of this beta-lactam kind of antibiotic, let me give a different color let's say in green color this particular let's say this is the antibiotic and this antibiotic is going to prevent 
is going to bind to the PBP, penicillin binding protein. That's why the name came as penicillin binding protein because initially penicillin was the beta-lactam antibiotic that we discovered that, that, that we know about the function. So penicillin and, uh, binds to this protein, so we call it penicillin binding protein. So whether it's a uh, cefazolin binding, uh, cefazolin binds to it or whether uh, cefraxone binds to it, we still call it as a penicillin binding protein. So it binds to the PBP and inhibits the function of transpeptidation reaction. As a result, no cross-linking is possible. So no synthesis of peptidoglycan wall. So this is how the cefazolin functions or any other beta-lactam antibiotic function. All right. In this animated segment, we are going to see the mechanism of action of beta-lactam antibiotic. So any of the antibiotic that carries the beta-lactam ring, be it penicillin, be it uh, carbapenems, be it uh, cephalosporins, they all belong to this category and they prevent the synthesis of peptidoglycan layer. And if the peptidoglycan layer is not produced in bacteria, the cell wall will not be strong enough to hold uh, and maintain the structure of bacteria. And as a result, the cell will die. So what is the mechanism of beta-lactam antibiotic? Let's look at this. This is uh, the structure of, uh, let's say, peptidoglycan component, which is made up with two things. One is the NAG and NAM, N-acetyl glucosamine and N-acetyl muramic acid. And particularly in N-acetyl muramic acid, we can see the amino acids are connected to each other. So the amino acids are with different color code, red, green, blue. Red are D-alanine in this case. And at the end of this NAM structures, there are these two D-alanine residues connected. So these are the alanine residues, the red color, D-alanine residue. And in order to build the peptidoglycan structure, in order to build the peptidoglycan structure, this D-alanine need to have a proper cross-linking event. And for that, they require a transpeptidase enzyme known as PBP, penicillin binding protein. Okay. So this penicillin binding protein brings itself and interacts to the D-alanine and what it does, it cleaves one of this D-alanine out, okay, and it brings another similar set of uh, NAGNAM structure to cross-link and this NAGNAM structure will be in place and transpeptidase reaction is catalyzed by the, transpeptidation is catalyzed by the transpeptidase or PBB protein and a peptide bond is formed and this concludes the cross-linking of the peptidoglycan layer. So this is a normal way of how the peptidoglycan layer is cross-linked. Now what happens when we treat this bacteria with beta-lactam antibiotic? So here comes the penicillin binding protein and here is the beta-lactam antibiotic. The beta-lactam antibiotic is going to bind to the transpeptidase active site of this penicillin binding protein. And what it will do is that it will not allow the cross-linking event. So now this PBP will go and interact to the alanine and it will not allow the further cross-linking event. So peptidoglycan cross-linking will be inhibited and as a result, no cross-linking. As a result, no cell wall structure formed. As a result, the bacteria will die. What are the clinical uses? So the clinical uses goes like respiratory tract infections. We use it for respiratory tract infection. We use it against urinary tract infections. We use it against skin and skin structural infections and biliary tract infections, bone and joint infections, genital infections, septicemia is another uh, place where we can use them and endocarditis is another situation where we can use them. So we can use it uh, for different kinds of uh, diseases in different locations, UTI, RTI, skin infection, bone and joint infection, genital infections in many different ways. So what are the side effects? And this is very important to know the side effects as well, right? So let me talk about the side effects now. So genital itching is one kind of side effect. White patches in the mouth is another kind of side effect. Loss of appetite, heartburn, gas, nausea, vomiting diarrhea so most of them heartburn loss of appetite nausea vomiting gas diarrhea these are all belonging to gastrointestinal side effects these are the common side effects but this drug is pretty well tolerated and not only that the cefuroxime kind and also the cephalosporin kind all these different uh, type of antibiotics are very well tolerated with this kind of gastrointestinal discomfort and side effects 
but the reward uh, ratio against this side effects are good enough to use them in different infections so that's all about uh, the so that's all about uh, this cephalosporin uh, kind of uh, like cef cefazolin in this case uh, antibiotic so if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to more to know more about this kind of antibiotic videos like this cefazolin antibiotic mechanism of action thank you